the Lord heal you and with your spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as on this day we celebrate with joy the great feast of our Lord's Epiphany, let us call to mind our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, to our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon, and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who by the leading of a star manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth, mercifully grant that we, who know you now by faith, may at last behold your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We sit for the reading. Testament lesson is written in the 60th chapter of the book of the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. The darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall be thrilled and will rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you, the wealth of the nations shall come to you, a multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and uh, Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come, they shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to Psalm 72, The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render him tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings fall down before him, all nations give him service. 
The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helpers. He has pity on the weak and the needy, and saves the lives of the needy. From oppression and violence he redeems their life, and precious is their blood in his sight. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. Long may he live, may gold of Sheba be given to him. May prayer be made for him continually, and blessing invoked for him all day long. The Lord is King, let the earth rejoice. A reading from the Epistle of St. Paul to the Church in Ephesus. This is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner of Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words, a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, that is, the Gentiles, who have become fellow heirs, members of the same body, and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the Gospel. Of this Gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given to me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given to me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ, and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the Church the wisdom of God in its rich variety might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The hymn, Earth Has Many a Nobler City. <laughs> And with your spirit. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. 
In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child that has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at his rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes you see us uh, depart from the body of the church with the sacrament uh, in uh, a dignified way. 
so that he might take it to uh, distribute amongst the 17 or 20 members of the Gozo congregation who are still coming to the chapel of the seminary every Wednesday. And also he preaches to us here and also online. His blog is available on YouTube because, as today, he will be recording. Um, and we are moving towards a situation where it will be on the cathedral website. So, Michael, thank you very much for your contribution to our spiritual journey over these last weeks. How was your Christmas? Is Christmas in fact over? Is Christmas just the celebration of a past event, an anniversary, a birthday, however special? Come to think of it. Don't we tend to live our lives from one event to the next? As if Henry Ford was right when he said, quote, Life's just one darn thing after another. If there's a day or two in our diary blank, don't we tend to say, quote, I'm not doing anything that day? As if there's nothing, no life, nothing to learn or discover nothing to experience on those days. How different is St. John's understanding of Christmas, life, and humanity? For St. John, the Christmas story is set in the context of creation. In the beginning, Christmas thus is not an event of the past, but the ongoing life of God with his people, humankind made in his likeness and image. Christmas is God continuing to give life to his people, and the word became flesh and lived among us. Christmas, says St. Gregory of Nyssa, is the festival of recreation. It is as if God said, I want humanity to see my face. I want them to hear my voice. I want them to touch me. I want to live their life. I want them to live my life. This is God in the flesh, the divine human, holy humanity. This festival of recreation is God entrusting himself to human beings, to you and to me. It is the sharing and exchanging of life between God and you and me. That's what Christmas presents represent. That's why the early church could say that God became human so that humanity could become God. It means that we are holy and intended to be holy, not as an achievement of our own, but as the gift of God. This is the gift of Christmas. We have been given power to become children of God. God sees humanity as the opportunity and the means to reveal himself. Yet don't we often use our humanity as an excuse? I'm only human, we declare, as if we are somehow deficient. We fail to see, to believe, to understand that in the word becoming flesh and living among us, we are God's first sacrament. Human beings are the tangible, outward, and visible carriers of God's inward and spiritual presence. 
Have we ever thought of ourselves as a sacrament? Have we ever looked at someone and said to ourselves, that is the sacramental image of God? Rabbis say that each person has a procession of angels going before them, crying out, make way for the image of God. Imagine how different our lives and world would be if we lived with this as our reality and the truth that guided our lives. This means that Christmas cannot be limited to an event. Christmas is a life to be lived, a way of being. It means that Christmas is a verb rather than a noun. How are we Christmasing? Are we recognizing the Word become flesh in our own life? Are we recognizing the Word become flesh in the lives of others? Do we see the processions of angels and hear their voices? The Word became flesh and will never cease living among us. So let us make way for the image of God. Wherever we go, whatever we are doing, whoever we are with, let's Christmas our way through life. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Heavenly Father, by the manifestation of your Son, Jesus Christ, to the Gentile world, you became flesh amongst us as one of us, foretold by the prophets of old, and revealed by the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord. For that great gift of Christmas, we give you high praise and hearty thanks, and that we may continue to witness to that gift throughout the year, give us stern and confident hearts and minds, so that all we do and say, and in all our being, we may enflesh the very presence of Christ. Father, in this new year, as we recall with gratitude and thanksgiving those blessings that we have received at your hands. We also recall with thanksgiving those who have gone before us because of the COVID-19 pandemic. In your service and in the service of others, you have taken to yourself many of those we have loved and known. May they serve you now in the heavenly Jerusalem with all whom we know who have died in faith according to your promise, the promise of your Son, our Lord. Father, we pray for your church as she witnesses to the truth of the gospel and your love in the world. Give her a clear focus for these next months ahead, for this year. Focusing on your love and with humility and confidence, proclaim the word made flesh. Lord, hear us. Father, we pray for the Church of England 
and the Anglican Communion, Augustine, Archbishop of Canterbury. In this our diocese, we pray for Robert, our bishop, and David, his suffragan, and Norman, our provincial episcopal visitor. We pray for Pope Francis. We pray for the ecumenical patriarch, Bartholomew, and for all other church leaders around the world, that they may lead us in the ways of righteousness and peace. Herein we pray for Charles Shekina, Archbishop and Metropolitan of these islands, for his assistant Joseph, for Bishop Anton and his people in Gozo, as we continue to pray for all Anglicans on these islands, that together we may witness to the eternal truth and verities of the Word made flesh, which dwells amongst us now and forever. Lord, hear us. <laughs> Father, we pray for the nations of the world, at this time for this island and its president, George Abela. We pray for the United Kingdom and its dependencies around the world, and for the Commonwealth of Nations, especially for Elizabeth, our Queen, her consort, Prince Philip, approaching his 100th anniversary of birth. We pray also for the Prince of Wales and his family, and all those who offer advice and support in their roles throughout our islands. We pray also for other national leaders, and particularly at this time for the United States of America as it transitions from one leader to another. We pray for President-elect Biden. We pray also for those countries where Christian men and women may not openly share the joy of Christmas, that they may turn their hearts to you, the only true God, and Christ Jesus, your Son, our Lord. Lord, hear us. Father, we pray at this beginning of the year for our families, our friends, our loved ones, however near or distant they may be, that we may support each other and bring something of the love of the Holy Family into our lives. We think of the model of Mary, the mother of Christ, and her husband, Saint Joseph. We think of all who came to them in Bethlehem and of the representatives of the world in the person of the three wise men, sages, philosophers, historians, who, knowing the import of the birth of your son, sought to come and simply adore him. Lord, hear us. Father, we pray for the sick, those who ask for our prayers at this time, those who are in our hospitals because of coronavirus, for those in our nursing homes, those who have returned home after operations, those who are convalescing, that your Holy Spirit will strengthen and empower them to continue to witness to the saving precepts of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, hear us. We pray, loving Father, for those who have died over the last year, friends, relations, colleagues, 
that the witness of your son on his cross that today you will be with me in paradise will apply to all who die in faith and in the love of your son that we with them the church militant and the church triumphant may continue to worship you the one and only god lord hear us rejoicing in the fellowship of the blessed virgin mary and saint joseph and with the three wise men who sought to adore our son we commend ourselves and the whole of creation to your unfailing love merciful father accept these prayers for the sake of your son our saviour jesus christ amen the hymn as with gladness men of old Have made 
will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. my brothers and sisters that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty God. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of his church. Lord, accept the offerings of your church. Not gold, frankincense or money, but the sacrifice of and food they symbolize. Jesus Christ, who is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks. Today, you revealed in Christ your eternal plan of salvation and showed him as the light of all peoples. Now that his glory has shone among us, you have renewed humanity in his immortal image. Now with angels and archangels, and with the whole company of heaven, with the saints of God and with the kings and magi, we sing the unending hymn of your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We kneel or sit. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body that is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the, the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, according to mine, his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this anamnesis of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice, we bring before you these holy gifts, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share these holy gifts, so that we in the company of Our Lady, St. Paul, the wise men and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. 
Amen. We stand to say together the prayer our Lord himself taught us. Let us pray with confidence to the Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and with your spirit. Let us give a sign of peace, and in looking at each other, see in each other Christ our Lord. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. This is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Lord God, the bright splendor whom the nations seek. May we, who with the wise men have been drawn by your light, discern the glory of your presence in your Son, the Word made flesh, even Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work through your praise and glory. Amen. The response to the solemn blessing for the Feast of the Epiphany is Amen. God has called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. May you experience his kindness and blessings throughout the year. Be strong in faith, in hope, and in love. Amen. Because you are followers of Christ, who appeared on this day as a light shining in darkness, may he make you a light to all your sisters and brothers. Amen. The wise men followed the star and found Christ, who is light from light. May you too find the Lord when your pilgrimage is ended. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass has ended. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. The hymn, As with Gladness, Men of Old. Sorry. Hail to the Lord's anointed, great King, and great Son.